Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a really awesome little project from Retro Game Restore. What I have here in my hand is a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 carrier board, but this is specifically designed to fit inside of a Sega Saturn model kit from Bandai. I'm actually really excited about this because if you're into the Raspberry Pi for retro gaming or even the CM4, you know we've had a lack of retro inspired cases for these units. We got a lot for the Raspberry Pi 3, the 3 Plus, but when it comes to the Raspberry Pi 4, there's not a lot on the market. In order to put something like this together, you'll need a CM4 module, you'll also need the Mini SS main board from Retro Game Restore, and you'll need the Sega Saturn model kit from Bandai. This is the Best Chronicles number 2. They have 5 I think they're going to be releasing for different consoles, but this is the Sega Saturn version, and this is what works with the Mini SS board from Retro Game Restore. These kits are really awesome and I ordered two of these because I wanted to put one together like it sits out of the box and I also wanted to use one for this project. So the first thing I'm going to do is install my CM4 module. I'm using a 4 gigabyte model because that's the only one I had on hand, but you could get away with the 1 or the 2 gigabyte version. We're just going to be running RetroPie on this unit. When it comes to the Mini SS main board, Retro Game Restore will be offering a few different add-ons for this thing. First up, he'll be making an add-on board for the old Sega Saturn RGBS cable. This goes right to CRT. And he also has one with that same cable but built-in Ethernet. Now right out of the box, you can use this no problem at all using Mini HDMI. These are just some custom add-ons that he's going to be making down the road. So let's go ahead and get the Sega Saturn model kit opened up. Now this does come with the shell, it also comes with a single controller, and this is a very mini Sega Saturn replica. It even comes with a replica of the PCB and the disk drive for the Sega Saturn. It obviously comes with a full shell, we even have a replica of the power supply, we got all the buttons for the exterior of the console itself, plus buttons for the controller, and it comes with a mini disk so you can add this into the model once you're finished. We won't be using some of these internal parts because we need to fit this PCB in here along with that CM4, but uh, it does come with instructions, and I'm going to go ahead and just put the shell together real quick. I'm not a big model person, but uh, I can follow these instructions, and I think I can make it look pretty decent. You're also going to need some side cutters or some really nice scissors to get everything off of these trees. So I've got the shell assembled, I just want to give you a look at how well this sits in here. And to power this board with the CM4 installed, Retro Game Restore actually opted for micro USB. That way there's no cutting at all. It actually lines right up with this model itself. So back here we do have access to a 3.5mm audio jack, SD card, and micro HDMI. Now I definitely want to put the disk drive in here, but since I'm not using the extra internal parts, I will have to do a bit of gluing or taping, but I think I can make it look pretty good. And this does fit together really well. We have two micro USB ports sticking out of the front, and you can use an adapter, but for me, I'm going to be using a Bluetooth controller. I will have to use that at first, but once I get everything set up, I'll be fully wireless. And I gotta say, once it's finished up, this thing looks absolutely amazing. I opted for the Virtua Fighter disc. You can actually change the sticker out or put a sticker on the rear side, but I also put together that little controller. It's going to be non-functional, it's just a model, but I think it looks really good sitting next to this. I personally made one mistake. I put a little too much pressure on that top cover and I put a crease in it. I'm really upset about this. I'm actually trying to decide if I want to order a whole nother case and just replace the top or just leave it like it is, but that was user error. Just be very careful with the parts. So now I want to go ahead and boot this up. I've already set up RetroPie on my CM4. I've got a few Sega Saturn games installed and I'm going to be running Yoba San Shiro. I know that the Raspberry Pi 4 isn't spectacular at Sega Saturn emulation but we still have a ton of other games that we can play on this unit. This PCB comes with a red and a green LED, and you can actually see them right on the front of the Sega Saturn here. No modification required. The model kit does include that small controller, but it's not going to be functional, and I wanted something that kept close to the Sega Saturn. I just don't have any USB Sega Saturn controllers laying around, and I kind of wanted to go Bluetooth with it, so I opted to use my M30 controller. It's not quite Sega Saturn, but I think it's close enough. Alright, so here we are. I'm running the latest version of RetroPie on the CM4. I have this M30 controller connected over Bluetooth. Let's go ahead and start up a Sega game. We'll go with uh, Sonic CD for Sega CD first, then we'll move over to some Sega Saturn. So we know Sega CD works really well on the Raspberry Pi, but when it comes to Sega Saturn, there are some games that'll struggle. Now with this here, I'm actually using Yoba Sanchiro. You can install it in RetroPie. It does take a little bit of work. And if you're interested in seeing a tutorial, I will get one made. Just let me know in the comments below. 
But here's Panzer Dragoon, and unfortunately we just can't hit 60 with this. Now keep in mind, I'm not overclocked with the CM4. We could do an overclock on this thing. We could go up to 2 gigahertz, but I need a heatsink that'll fit inside of this case. So I'm sitting at the stock clocks of 1.5 gigahertz on the CM4, and we're around 45 FPS. I mean, it would definitely help out with an overclock on that CPU, but I just don't think we'd hit 60 with this one. Next up we have Croc, and again, we're still sitting in the 40s, almost 50 with this one. This one's a bit easier to run than Panzer Dragoon, but still, we're kind of lacking here on that CPU side of things. But when it comes down to it, the CM4, which uses the same CPU as the Raspberry Pi 4, can still handle thousands and thousands of retro games. PlayStation 1, SNES, Neo Geo, some really good N64 emulation with the latest updates. There's just a ton of different systems that run at full speed on the Raspberry Pi 4 and the CM4. I'm just really glad to see a new case for the CM4, and uh, I know it's not just a case, you have to have that PCB and that model kit, but you know, it's been very stagnant when it comes to retro style gaming cases for the Raspberry Pi 4 or even the CM4. So in my opinion, this is just a breath of fresh air. So yeah, I think this came out really nicely. I wish I wouldn't have damaged my top cover, but if you're gentle with it, you won't have any issue. I kind of tried to rip it off of the tree without cutting it all the way. Just make sure you got everything disassembled from the tree before you take the parts out. When it comes to emulation on the CM4, it's basically the same as the Raspberry Pi 4. What you saw running in this video for Sega Saturn was using Yobasi and Shiro with no overclock, so we were at 1.5 GHz, but with a CPU cooler on this thing, it will fit inside of the case. We should be able to do a bit better, because we can go up to 2 GHz with the CM4, actually a little over. Everything fits really nicely inside of the case, all of our ports are accessible from the exterior, and it really should, because this was specifically designed for this Sega Saturn model kit. So if you're interested in getting your hands on the mini Sega Saturn main board, it is up for pre-order over on Retro Game Restore's website. I'll leave a link for this in the description. I'll also leave a link to the model kit you need to pick up for the Sega Saturn case and some CM4s. I would recommend at least a 2GB CM4, but if your only option is picking up a 1GB, it'll also work out quite well for emulation. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I just thought this was too cool not to make a video on. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.